you're anything like me, and if you're watching this video, I'm guessing that you are, Halloween was kind of a big deal as a kid. Oh sure, it's still great. Who doesn't love settling in on a cool October night with a glass of spirits and a big bowl of candy to greet their favorite scary monsters and super creeps? But, in spite of our best efforts to rise to the occasion, there's something inexplicably missing in these grown-up observations, that final, elusive piece that might complete our autumnal puzzle. That piece is, of course, the past, an abstract whose contours inexplicably fit wherever needed most. And while there is no reclaiming it, one might temporarily recapture some of this intangible magic by venturing on the wings of memory to a time not so long ago, when such dark enchantments could be found on the shelves of every drugstore and local five and dime. The cultural relevance of Halloween in America has waned somewhat, morphing from its contemporary origins as a children's holiday into something far more vulgar and consumer-driven, but only a handful of decades ago it was a far different story. While adults celebrated the hobby in their own way, Halloween, with a capital H, was meant for the kids, and their needs were met in spades by intrepid manufacturers rushing to out-innovate one another while searching for the next big thing. Tonight, we take a look at these plastic and vinyl pioneers, specifically how costume companies met the need of candy-crazed kids chomping at the bit to become their favorite comic and cartoon characters. The biggest of these companies was Ben Cooper. From their headquarters at 3334th Street, Brooklyn, New York, Ben Cooper came to more or less dictate what generations of kids would wear come October 31st. Ben Cooper Incorporated was formed by the merging of two smaller companies in 1942. By the end of that decade, Ben Cooper Incorporated stood as one of the most successful Halloween costume manufacturers in the U.S. The company's product could be found in such notable retailers as Woolworths, Sears, and Kresge's, later known as Kmart, as well as the local drug and variety stores. To say Ben Cooper was everywhere was an understatement. In 1963, Cooper moved some 2.5 million units alone. By the end of the decade, the company dominated nearly three-fourths of the seasonal costume market. Innovations such as the Harry Scary line, the Creature People, and the safety feature Glitter Glow helped keep Ben Cooper at the forefront of Halloween manufacturing, but the company was an innovator in more ways than one. Ben Cooper pioneered the now ubiquitous process of licensing popular movie, television, and comic book properties for use in their products. Beginning with Walt Disney's popular characters, Ben Cooper went on to snatch up the licenses for Davy Crockett, Zorro, and British pop sensations The Beatles. For all of that, it's the appearance of comic book characters like Batman and Superman that brings our little video into focus. The observant child would have noticed that the likenesses weren't always spot on. For whatever reason, the designers over at Ben Cooper felt that they knew best when it came to character design, resulting in some puzzling additions. The Superman costume was frequently offered with a mask, not of Superman's face, but instead one of those cheapy half-masks molded in bright red. Perhaps this was to assuage parents who felt ripped off by paying the same price as a regular costume, but the mask's addition remained puzzling to most kids. Still, it wasn't half as embarrassing as Batman, whose mask featured an unmissable yellow bumper sticker affixed firmly to the center of his forehead. Considering most of Batman's costumes listed the character's name right there on his bat oval, not only was this redundant, but it was willfully obtuse. Spider-Man never had to put up with that crap. Speaking of, old Webhead has a storied past with Ben Cooper as well. The Ben Cooper Spider-Man connection is worthy of a video all of its own, but for now we'll just consider the particulars. 
In addition to licensing popular characters, Ben Cooper was savvy enough to produce its own. There was no shortage of ghouls, ghosts, goblins, and witches the company might use free of charge if they were just willing to spend a few bucks whipping them up. And whip them up they did. And among the miscellaneous monsters and menaces was a curious yellow and black creation known as Spider-Man. Ah, a knockoff, you say. But what if I told you this Spider-Man appeared almost a full decade before Marvel's now legendary web spinner? It's true, but don't take my word for it. At the end of this video, follow the link to Old Guy's own John Cimino's page where he explores this situation in depth, including his own pivotal role in the documentation of this historic artifact. It's a truly compelling tale, one which has yet to fully unravel. But Spidey wasn't the only Marvel character to appear under the Ben Cooper banner. The two companies were located within blocks of one another, and soon many of Marvel's colorful cast were getting the Ben Cooper treatment. How about old Daredevil here? Look familiar? He should. He's just a repainted Batman. Let's hear it for clever reuse. One thing that's easy to forget about Halloween's past is the sense of idealism that the holiday brought. In spite of being largely made of plastic and refined sugar, there was a sense that it was all so much larger. After all, it was a year in the making, and dreams can get awfully big in that amount of time. The realities of the holiday could be crushing. If you were a kid with glasses wearing one of those string masks, well, it was almost impossible. If you were a heroine whose motif was showing a little skin, you were really out of luck. Case in point, not only does this Wonder Woman costume feature a large and unflattering pair of blue and red pants, but the top is sleeveless. Considering Halloween is midway through autumn and the problem is apparent, Wonder Woman's gonna go trick-or-treating in a coat. I'm guessing that could take the wind out of any kid's sails. As you can see, the designs were often refreshed, adding color or more updated artwork to better reflect the property in question. Your Hulk was certainly not your brother's Hulk. For good or ill, Ben Cooper was never shy about changing things up, and they continued to expand their character lineup. The Joker appeared fairly late in the game. Although that was one character kids might pull off without a plastic costume. Not so with Darkseid. Well, unless you were related to Ed Asner. Is there more? You bet. Ben Cooper continued to capitalize on cultural phenomena like Ghostbusters, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, and Star Wars. Sadly, like all good things, Halloween as a national holiday began to lose a little steam. The controversial poisoning of a well-known painkiller with cyanide led to the death of several individuals, and suddenly the idea of taking candy from strangers began to lose its luster. Combined with other social and cultural factors, the holiday slowly lost its hold as America's holiday, supplanted by the far safer and unsurprisingly more commercialized Christmas. Halloween became more of an adult pastime, and the desire for higher-end costumes for grown-ups meant the end of Ben Cooper's reign. The company was sold, but our memories live on. This Halloween, be sure to leave the light burning, and have a bowl of candy ready, because you never know who might show up. For the old guys who like old comics network, I'm Jason Mink. Thanks for watching, and happy Halloween.